one could say everybody is still already the stillness is already there it does not need to be found even certainly it does not need to be created because it's already there the only thing is you may not notice it. If there's a lot of mental noise, then you just don't notice it, that it's there. And also you don't notice the dimension within yourself that is far deeper than the movement of thought. And your whole identity is then bound up with the movement of thought. A mind created sense of self. A personal history and no more. That is soon coming to an end soon, next year or in 40, 50 years time, it's soon. <coughs> so who you are and stillness are one and the same. And if you have not yet gone completely mad in this mad world, that means you have some access to the stillness inside you. You may not remember it afterwards because it's not memorable, since stillness is timeless and the mind cannot memorize it or think, oh, that was interesting, I'll remember that because stillness is not interesting. Interesting is a mental thing. Just as our weekend here is not going to be interesting. <laughs> you may have noticed that already. But interesting is not the ultimate. It's only the ultimate to the human mind. You can go out here and look at a tree or flower or the sunset and could you say this sunset is interesting only if you were trying to write a PhD about sunsets if you had to analyze it or the oak tree the oak tree becomes interesting the moment you start to analyze it mentally and there is a place for that also in this dimension but if you get caught up on that dimension only, where you break things up into little bits and pieces and analyze them, and by the way, most kinds of analysis, you have to kill the thing first before you can analyze it, or in the process of analysis it gets killed. But if you just be with the oak tree, contemplate it, truly look, then what you're looking at goes beyond interesting, is far deeper than interesting. The same as the sunset. There's nothing interesting about it, and yet 
It is awe-inspiring. It is deep. There's a depth there that defies analysis by the mind. At the moment you analyze it, you have reduced it to something lifeless. And most people in our civilization, and this has been going on for a long time, are trapped in that dimension where compulsively they go about their life analyzing, interpreting, and labeling things as soon as they enter their field of consciousness. They do it to people, they do it to situations that they encounter, immediately have some personal reactive relationship to it. They do it to nature and they can no longer perceive the sacredness that is there in nature because they approach it only through thinking. And that is a dreadful prison that you then end up in, the prison of your own mind. And then you approach your whole life only through that. And your whole life becomes reduced to a conceptual reality in the head, consisting of thoughts that you have about things, viewpoints, opinions, and even so-called knowledge. Knowledge is thought, a label, and gives the illusion that you know. And all it is it's a thought that you have put on something. And then the, it loses its depth and aliveness. And you begin to relate to reality through the veil of thinking. And you relate to yourself through the veil of thinking. Because you yourself become a conceptual thought-based entity, an egoic self, a me, with its unfulfilled personal history, its desires and fears and frustrations and its, its hopes that it will find ultimate fulfillment of its unfulfilled and unfulfilling sense of self based on a story in the future, which again is the thought form, that's what the future is. Nobody has ever encountered it except as a thought. <laughs> and yet most people live unconsciously as if the next moment or the one after that were more important than this moment, the only thing there ever is. This one moment that you could never escape from, have never escaped from, will never escape from, that is inseparable from the life that you are, also inseparable from stillness, because the moment you enter the now with your attention, a stillness arises the essence of the present moment, no matter how mad it may appear on the surface, is always stillness. It is also sacredness, the only place where the sacred dimension can be found is now. You have to be present to this moment. You have to wake up into this moment to realize 
that life is sacred. When you are lost in thought, sacred is meaningless. It could become another of the many concepts that you can play with. And you could write a PhD about it without ever having encountered it yourself. So this, the depth of now, is inseparable from your very being, your very life, and it is the sacred one life. <laughs>